Gina Carr, I'd like to welcome you onto the stage, please. Thank you. Thank you, guys. What a wonderful, wonderful group. And congratulations to all of the ex-presidents, uh, past presidents, and uh, people who've moved up. That's just wonderful. Um, OK, so we're going to talk about <laughs> Terry's giving me that look because I say so. So if I say so, go. All right, I'm going to know that. We're going to talk about what speakers need to know about social media. And fortunately, we had a great introduction to some social media principles earlier, which were really helpful. And we'll go through some that and some others. I'll also uh, leave some room towards the end. We'll talk about book marketing specifically. Anybody here want to know about book marketing? Really important. So yes, I help passionate people build powerful tribes. Because if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. You're going to need people, ODASC, NS, uh, PSA. You're going to need people who are you know, encouraging you, your mentors, your coaches, as well as the pe your team members, as well as the world that you're trying to, to get your message out to to uh, help you accomplish your mission and get your brilliance. I say you want to share your brilliance. You want to get your brilliance out into the world. And that's part of what social media does. It helps you open your mind and open your heart to the world. You know, uh, right now I'm standing in front of a group of a bunch of people. Sometimes you're standing in, in front of thousands of people. But online, you're in front of millions of people. And people are judging you all the time. So that's what we're talking about today, ultimately, is your online reputation, your digital grooming, your social scoring. As Terry said, the hashtag PSA UK. Oh, and I am going to go kind of fast. If you don't want to take crazy notes, just go to getclout.com or give me your business card at the end and I'll be sure to send you the slides. We're big proponents of clout, and people say, well, do you get paid by them? Did you make any money on this $200 million? No, we don't. Uh, we do sell our books, and we sell courses uh, that help people with their clout score, but we are not compensated at all by the company clout. That's a copy of our book. Uh, you can get that at cloutmatters.com. You can also um, find out, you know, see a lot of videos that we've done about clout there, so if you want some more information about that. What is the what, why, and how of influence marketing. You know, in the old days, the town crier would stand in the square and say, you know, uh, the news of the day, uh, there's, you know, fighting at the Coliseum and uh, the sewers are going to be cleaned. And, if you, and today's message is brought to you by Roman Grains. Caesar loves Roman Grains and you will too. Literally, they would give a little commercial of someone who was influential and what they thought about the product that was that was the uh, marketing piece. More current times, we've seen the celebrity marketing, so influence marketing. And of course, people would, companies would pay millions of dollars to people like Tiger Woods. And then we know what would happen. What would happen with someone like Tiger Woods is that um, you know there was a stain on the company. They spent millions and millions of dollars investing in him, and then his actions caused the company to be very embarrassed. His endorsements were pulled. So what is the new form of influence marketing? It's the citizen influencer. It's us. It's everyday people. We now have the power, because of social media, to reach millions of people. And you can be influential in a variety of different areas. And that's where companies are now looking for the people that are influential in the different areas. And how are they finding them? They're finding them through tools like clout. So here's an example. I think many of you know Claire. She's very influential online, and um, she's someone that, that companies might be looking for. Of course, Graham Jones, also quite influential in several different areas. This is a, a look at clout at the main dashboard. If you were looking at Graham on clout, it not only tells you that his score is 65, which is a pretty good score for a thought leader, it tells you, it, it gives you links to his different uh, networks. It's easy to just click there and go to his Facebook or to his Twitter. It tells you that he's influential in psychology, blogging, social media, and content marketing. So, clout, the easy way to say it is, is a score from 0 to 100, 100 is the top, that says how influential you are online. So, for example, you know, you, most of you probably know your credit score, and it's private. 
your cloud score is sort of like a credit score for the internet and it's totally public. Now some of you are saying, well, I don't know anything about it. If you have a Twitter account, you have a clout score. Anybody can look at your clout score right now if you have a Twitter account because they just go hand in hand and that's the way the system works. So people are looking at you and judging you whether you know it or not if you have a Twitter account. That means you have a clout score. Here's somebody else who's a citizen influencer. Yes? Miss Mindy, let's see what let's see what the internet says. Mindy's influential in books, writing, business, leadership, and publishing. Now, how accurate is that? Yeah, very accurate. She has a score of 70. 70 is a great score for a thought leader. It's hard to get above 80 unless you're a true celebrity. You have a Wikipedia page, you're an athlete, an actor, or something like that. It's really hard to get above 80. But for a thought leader to be in the 70s is an excellent score. I would encourage each of you to strive for getting above 60. This is another thing that Clout shows you is, and shows the world is which of your posts have been most successful. So it's, you know, a lot of times you're working on social media, you're like, I don't know if this is any good or not. And, or you posted something months ago and you forgot about it. Well, one of the good things about Clout is they have Clout moments, and so they post and remind you of the moments that you, the things that you posted that got a lot of attention. I say cloud is sort of like a bathroom scale. You could be exercising, <laughs> eating right, but how do you know if you're losing weight? How do you know, or gaining weight, whichever your, your goal might be? So it's a scale. So as important, as much as people are judging you, you need to judge yourself. You need to evaluate your own activity. And it's hard to do. You tweet, you post, is this doing any good or not? Clout helps you determine that. They calculate billions of points, data points across the world. All right, so you're probably out there saying, well, all right, this is kind of interesting, Gene, but why is it important? Well, it's important because decision makers are increasingly using clout scores for their decisions. For us as speakers in particular, book publishers, and meeting planners. You may not be hearing a lot about it now, but you know, here we are, we are at the PSA meeting. We're here to help you see what's ahead. And what's ahead is social scoring, in particular clout score, is going to be increasingly important. It's important because it's a noisy world. And there's so much junk going on out there. I can buy Twitter followers. I can buy Facebook fans. But I can't buy them interacting with me. I can't necessarily influence them interacting with me. And so this is how people are going to screen things. And right now, um, we hear increasingly incidents where the book publishers are asking for clout scores and the meeting planners are asking for clout scores. How many of you put on your own events? OK. When you're thinking about who else you bring to your event, don't you want to know if they're influential or not? Are they going to be able to put butts in the seat? Cloud score will help you. So this example here was Wired Magazine a couple, a few years ago uh, did an article about a fellow who was interviewing for a big marketing job at Salesforce.com. And part of the interview they got to and they said, well, what's your cloud score? He had no idea. He didn't get the job. In the interview, they looked him up. He only had a, like a 47, 37, something like that. Uh, the person who did get the job had a, close to a 70. And um, this person then started uh, learning a lot more about social media. He has a high cloud score now. Um, in Hollywood, directors and the people who, who are putting the movies together, TV shows together, they're looking at cloud scores because it saves them money on marketing, frankly. This person here, uh, Zoe Dashnell, she's very popular on social media. She generates a ton of activity for her shows. So, Rather than spending tons of money on marketing, if she has her own crowd that she's getting to watch the shows, they save money and the shows are likely to be much more successful. Cloud scores are being integrated into your customer service experience. Right now, you call, if you, how many of you have O2 as your, okay, a lot of you. So if you call in with a complaint or you need customer service, if, if they're sophisticated, they might have a system in there where they're ranking you or routing you according to uh, how much money you spend with the company. Well, increasingly, they're going to be routing you according to your clout score because <laughs> they don't want 
somebody say, you know, if you're real influential online, they don't want you tweeting that this is a bad company or that you're having a bad experience. Why don't you just let Kirkman finish everybody? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point, but the reality is it's a limited, you know, it's a world of limited resources. So they're going to put you to the top of the line and to the best customer service people. You don't want a bad experience uh, magnified. You can ask uh, United Airlines. You guys know this video, United Breaks Guitars? Okay. If you don't know United Breaks Guitars, go home and Google it. It's a fabulous story. Uh, this was the first of three videos they did. Um, United Airlines famously broke this fellow's guitar. They wrote a song about it. Millions and millions of hits later. Uh, now three, three different songs later. This fellow, Dave Carroll, now has a, a great career as a, as a speaker on customer service. <laughs> That's the only reason Chris Cooper brought his guitar was to try and do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is J.B. Glossinger, a friend of ours. Uh, he's in our mastermind group. He has the most, uh, it's the number one podcast on personal development in the world. And so uh, J.B. and his wife travel back and forth. She's from Columbia. They travel back and forth from Columbia to Miami a lot. They were in Columbia for a trip. They needed to make a change. He called up the airline and said, uh, you know, I need to make a change. And they um, said, well, Mr. Glossinger, that'll be $800. We're having to make the change. Well, we, we had just come out. Of, he had just been in our, one of our mastermind meetings, and we were talking about how perks, how clout and, and your social score is impacting p business decisions. So um, JB said, you know, um, this is my clout score. I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers on Facebook and Twitter, and I'm, I'm pretty influential online. Um, why don't you look me up and let's, you know, call me back and let me know if it's still going to be $800. <laughs> they, they looked him up. Within 10 minutes, they called him back and they, they not only waived the $800 fee, they said that we're moving you and your wife to, to the front of the plane and uh, they took really, really good care of him. <laughs> this is the reality we're living in. Now, here's a tweet. Word of mouth has always been the best form of marketing. Gina Carr, PSA UK. You don't have to tweet that, but I'm pulling the curtain back a little bit here. In your programs, make it easy for your, for your audience to tweet. Make it easy for people to tweet if they, are, if they are actively tweeting, and I know a lot of you are and appreciate that very much, um, and especially in a webinar format. These work really well. You get a lot of extra tweets, a lot of extra influential digital marketing juice. If you put in your, um, I'm making it easy for you guys because I'm reminding you what my handle is, what the hashtag is, and this is an easy tweet. It's already been formatted, it's less than 120 characters, and so it's easy for people to retweet. So you can do that in your programs as well. So here's another example where the companies are looking for you in, they're looking for you, the citizen influencer. Companies like Audi, Disney, Sony, they say, um, okay, we're bringing out this new car. Let's find people who are influential about cars and influential about, um, in, this pay, in this case, technology. And clout allows them to do that, to narrow in on those people and say, give you the car for a weekend to try out. That's what Chevy Volt did. They found people who were influential about cars and about the in environment. And they gave them the, the keys for a long weekend and said, hey, go drive it. If you like it, tweet about it. They know these people are influential online and likely to tweet about it anyway. They don't have to, but they do. Virgin America teamed up with Clout. Check into a hotel in Vegas. You might get an upgrade to a, to a suite if you have, you know, upgrade to a better room if you have a high Clout score. So I say it's like a bathroom scale. Terry likes to say that Clout is like a... Uh, lighthouse. So it's the beacon. You know, you're in the rough, the rough and uh, noisy waters of the ocean, but you can see the the lighthouse, and clout shows you the way. This is behind the scenes of your clout. Now, earlier I showed you like Mindy's profile, what you would see if you went to her page. Now, if Mindy were to look in the background, behind the scenes, you can measure. And so clout shows me, yeah, I've been pretty stable. For the most part, you want to be pretty stable. Sometimes you'll have a birthday or something like that and your, your score may bump up a little bit, but in general, you, you're going to be pretty stable there. It also helps me evaluate, okay, where am I most uh, influential? 
I'm most influential on Facebook. It says 47%, Twitter 38%, LinkedIn is only 2%, and partially that's because LinkedIn just does not count a lot for your clout score. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. But it lets me know these different networks and where I'm most influential. Clout also has a component now that helps you to share content. So based on those topics that I'm influential in, Wikipedia, clout, social scoring, Clout automatically presents me with articles and says, these are good articles for your audience. You may want to share them. So it makes it easy to, to share those articles. Here's another citizen influencer among the group, Alan Stevens, Clout Score of 73. Let's see what he's influential in. Public relations, public speaking, and reputation management. So can you see how this is a powerful tool? You putting together your own groups, you choosing co-authors, you're choosing other speakers. The meeting planner is choosing you. Okay, so Mindy says she's really, uh, her website says she's really um, influential on in publishing. Is she really? Is the rest of the world saying that? Is the internet saying that? And that's what this sort of thing says. So you need to go in and look. You can choose your own topics. So I encourage you to go in and choose your own topics uh, because sometimes Clout will give you topics that you don't really want to be influential about. I mentioned earlier, um, thought leaders aspire to have a cult score above 60. That's healthy. 70s is really healthy. Again, 80s, you need to be celebrity status. These are the different networks that count currently counts. Of those, these are the ones that count the most. Twitter and Facebook. Instagram surprisingly counts a lot. So just shift your behavior there if you take a lot of pictures. Take them through Instagram and post on Facebook and Twitter instead of posting directly to Facebook. That's a real easy switch to make and it adds to your clout score. If you qualify for a Wikipedia page, that will automatic, automatically add 10 to 20 points to your clout score. It's really significant. It's the most significant thing you can do to add to your clout score. Now, unfortunately, it's really hard to qualify for a Wikipedia page. Who in here, might, who in here has a Wikipedia page? Two, three, three people, four people. Okay. It's really hard to get. Would you guys agree? Yeah. So how do you start? You have to, to qualify for Wikipedia page today, you need to be what's considered very notable. That means that prominent external media has featured you. So you've been written up in maybe USA Today or the Wall Street Journal or you've been featured on CNN or the BBC or something like that. Um, and it doesn't mean you've just been quoted, not, you know, not a single byline in the, in the Wall Street Journal and not something where you submitted an article to success.com, success but where they've profiled you. So if you think you might qualify, you can ask me. Um, my company does do that as a service for people, but I can just tell you that, that most folks don't, don't qualify. Does that answer that? Okay. Has Madonna got a Wikipedia page? <laughs> Madonna definitely has a Wikipedia page, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, here are some of my clients that, that do have Wikipedia pages that we've put together. Okay, so noteworthy, significant coverage by media, major media. Now here are some basic tips of engagement for all of your different networks that will help. I call it the ABCs of social, social media engagement. Always be engaging. Terry hit on this earlier that social media is not just broadcasting. You can't just look at it uh, as you know, your Twitter feed. As, as your content's going out, as it should, that's great. You need to be there to engage with people and you need to initiate engagement. You also need to be consistent. Better to be on there 5, 10, 15 minutes a day than you only get on once every few days. Good to be consistent. And then C, connect. You want to connect all the networks that Cloud allows you to connect and you want to connect with a lot of different people. So. Ailey, right? Okay, so Ailey, I asked her if, she could, if she'd be a guinea pig for me. So Ailey scores 50. I'm going to tell you something that will probably, your score will probably go up 10, 15 points just in the next couple of days. Number one, disconnect your Facebook page and connect your Facebook personal profile. Clout only allows you to connect Facebook personal profile or Facebook page. You will all get a better score if you connect your first, Facebook personal profile. And that's because of the dynamics of the way Facebook works. As Terry was explaining to Kate earlier, 
They've totally changed the algorithm. It's really hard to get people to your Facebook page. I encourage you to keep a Facebook page because I think it's good for business. It's good to just focus, you know, out there you, you almost do just broadcast. The only way these days to get people to your page, almost, is to pay for the post. Pay for the post, pay for people to come to your page. Cloud, I mean, Facebook, they're, they're real, realistic. You know, if you're there to promote your business, they want money for it. They, they make it easy for the people on the personal side to interact because they want the eyeballs there. They need the eyeballs there so that people will pay for the business. So I say keep a Facebook page, but on clout, connect your personal profile. That will raise your score probably 15 points right away. They can click on that and get access to your personal page, but still it depends on your personal page what you've posted. So within each post, you can make it friends only, you can make it restricted groups. The easiest way, the easiest way um, for Facebook these days is, I encourage everybody here as thought leaders, as you're, you're sort of a public person anyway, make your Facebook personal profile fairly public. You can allow followers. Kate was saying she was worried about, you know, in the old days, cloud, uh, Facebook would only allow up to 5,000 friends. Nowadays, they allow unlimited number of followers, but that means the entire public can see your post unless you make each post private. If you're really worried about, you know, you want to share your, your family and your friends, that, that sort of thing, um, you can share that in a private group. You could just have a private group that, that the public can't see. Uh, a secret group. You can um, also, although, cloud, although Facebook really discourages this, you can have a separate profile. You know, you could have something that's just family and friends, you know, your middle name or something like that that only certain people know about. Mm. What's that? And the list function. Uh, list function, that helps. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that can be very helpful. Okay, Heather. Heather, you. Uh, I asked Heather also if I could if I could get, use her as a guinea pig. Okay, it appears Heather has not even connected. You've not connected Clout, right? This is what the world will see if they come to your Clout page and you haven't connected your account. You haven't claimed your account. So Heather has a 38 just basically by doing very little. <laughs> she she actually does a lot. She's actually quite influential. Clout is not reflecting that because she hasn't gone in and claimed this account. And when I say claim the account, see right there on Twitter automatically, it says right here, hmm, we couldn't find her. Why don't you invite her to come on to Clout? And so it does tell me though that she posts, she tweets right now about personal development, East Midlands, <laughs> net, moms, I don't, net moms, charities, social entrepreneurship. So they have to be your categories, right? right? Yeah, um, but she only is showing Twitter. So all she needs to do is go in. If she were to connect her Facebook personal profile, her score would probably go up 20 points right away. I've got to do it, you know. All right, good. Uh, excellent. Another tweet. So they count what you're doing publicly, the RTs and the out replies. It's not just broadcasting. People have to be responding to your tweets. They have to be retweeting you. So keep them short, under 120 characters. Uh, you need to engage with people. You need to talk with people. So here's um, another reason that people will come and follow you and engage with you is you have a nice looking profile. So Alan, as you can see, he's taken advantage. Twitter just allowed this new, nice, huge uh, cover photo. And uh, Alan's done a great job with that, marketing his book. And um, he has a nice profile there. Simon also, very nice, look at this, he's a speaker. Is this impressive as a profile for a speaker? Very good, you know, showing him in front of a nice full crowd, they all have rapt attention, they're hanging on his every word. Showing him right there, his now Hazel, uh, uh, Simon, I, I do like the fact that you're showing that you're speaking, but I think it's really important for social media for people to know, like, and trust you. Just as in human, face-to-face, uh, -face, they wanna see your eyeballs. They want to see your eyeballs. So you really need to have a profile photo that shows your face. And you have, you have a bunch of Twitter accounts, I noticed. So <laughs> likely your score would be higher if you had fewer accounts. 
Um, and I don't, I don't think the profile really would help on that part, but, but that's just my feedback there. Now, I love what he's doing right here. As Nettie, Nettie. Nettie told us, uh, the nice square boxes. Yes. Did you do this? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I didn't even know that when I chose this earlier today. Tina, could I just say something? Yes. 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 Nitty might be embarrassed if I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway because we support our friends and we help one another. She has to reach a target. She she has to claim her visa so that she can stay in UK. She needs 5,000 um, UK sterling business before the end of June. So if you have any business at all, she, she is sitting there saying, Ailey, don't do that for me. <laughs> if you need creative work done, and even if it's only just this one time, why not help someone in the room who'd like to stay in the country, who has been working in UK for how long? Nine years, but now her visa's up. Actually, there's a border control man here. Speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> Support the girl if you need any work done. Oh, yeah. You know, Ailey, you, you opened this up. Uh, I, I've been very active in the National Speakers Association for many years, and I jokingly say that every good thing in my life, half jokingly, say everything good, good thing in my life has come from a uh, result of National Speakers Association. Terry Brock, my book, my new career, many, many things. And so that's just an example of how this group is so supportive and helpful and just does so many wonderful things, so many great friends. Okay, so back to, back to business here. Great way to promote your book. Great way to toot your own horn without, as they say, blowing it. Um, what do you people? What are people saying about your book? Take it, put it into a nice graphic that Nettie's created for you, and market the heck out of it. This is a client that, that I've done some work for. Many of you may know this, Steve Rizzo, quite a funny guy, CPAE, uh, former professional comedian. And so we took his book and we created a page that's a promotional page. And so for people who want to help market the book, they can go there and here it is, get, check out Steve, Steve Rizzo's new book. There's the, there's the link, there's the hashtag, and we used a little tool here so that they can tweet right away. It makes it easy for people just to go right there and tweet it. This is a tool that I love for, for my blog. Click to tweet. If you're using a WordPress blog, this allows you to take your blog text, you create a pull quote, pull quote, you know, whatever it is that you want to stand out on your blog, and also, just real simple, simple there is click to tweet. People just tweet it, and you have it already formatted with your Twitter handle in it, with whatever link you want in it. You make it nice and easy for people to help you. Excuse me, is that, is that a plugin? It's a plugin, free plugin. Cool. Click to tweet, right there. Uh, two, tool, two tools that I really like, uh, ifthisthenthat.com, Hootsuite. Mindy's up here, she knows all these. She knows all the insider tools, yes. These are great tools that help you uh, magnify your social media. Promotional posts. For this event here, we crafted some posts, uh, some tweets and some Facebook posts that I shared with Nikki and some others, and they got some of these out. I, I shared it kind of late. It's good to get this out to people in advance. Again, this is an easy way for you to help your meeting planners promote your event, promote your book launch, promote your, your presentation, whatever it is. And you say, you know, don't miss Terry Brock and Gina Carr discussing how professional speakers can use social media. So push some hashtags in there, put the link in there, and uh, get it out to them so that they can, can um, promote you better. It's just breaking it down. Really big, if you're tweeting, you need to be using hashtags. If you're not using hashtags, you're wasting your time. Every tweet should have a hashtag two or three, in my opinion. All right, Miss Nikki, she's another guinea pig here. <laughs> Excellent job. I like the, fit, the profile here. Very good. At Fabulous Impact and her personal name, good job. Okay, Saturdays are for smiling. She's using the hashtag smiling. I like it. Especially when the sun is out like today, sunshine gives us a boost, feel good from the inside out every day. Now just looking at that, I think it's a little long. Mm -hmm. A tweet like that in particular, that's your thought leadership stuff that you're, you're putting out there, this is my philosophy, this is, these are my brains on, on loan here, mm -hmm. <laughs> my brains displayed. You want to make it shorter so that it's easy for people to tweet. So look at the count. Don't do 140 even though it allows you to do 140. 
120 or less, so that people can retweet it easily. And you're interacting with people. You're engaging. So your first two tweets. Good job. I just make that one a little bit shorter. Okay. There's another little tweet. Facebook, likes, comments, and wall posts. So another example, uh, this is one that we did for our client, uh, took a testimonial and put the book and the website, all that together, very similar to what you guys did. Randy Gage, Terry mentioned earlier. Um, here's a great place to get good interaction on Facebook and also share yourself with your audience. It's called Way Back Wednesday and Throwback Thursday. Post something from your past. So here's an example. I posted water skiing. I, I posted uh, jumping out of an airplane, diving with sharks, you know, different things like that that people don't necessarily know about me. But by sharing that, I can say something and it, and it just makes sense. And these kind of posts get great interaction. Show your baby pictures, show your anniversary, you know, those sorts of things. We sh uh, Nettie showed this earlier. That type of post is great for your books and your ideas. All right, you get some great testimonials on LinkedIn, and you say, well, like, why doesn't Facebook have a feature like that? Well, they don't, but you can create it. So I say create an album that you call testimonials, what people are saying about Gina Carr in this case. And so I take the testimonials that people are giving me on LinkedIn, I just get their picture from Facebook or somewhere else, use their picture, and then use that testimonial that, that was on LinkedIn. I just copy it and paste it here. Yeah, so they, they've obviously made it public. They gave me a, a testimonial on LinkedIn. And so just copy it, paste it, put it on Facebook, put it in a testimonial album. Do things that are fun about your undergraduate or other milestones. I call this album Milestones. I went to Georgia Tech, I went to Harvard. You know, what are your milestones? When you get awards, this is a way to you, you're chronicling it in a, in a milestones or an awards album so that people who are see, searching you and wanting to find out more about you can find out easily. Um, big companies, a lot of you have big companies on your resume or companies that you've worked with. Get their logo and write a quick description of what you did for them and the results. This is like a living, breathing resume on social media. Now, LinkedIn does not count much for for your clout score. But, all right, I, I like to say, you know, it's a great day when clout score goes up and bathroom scale goes down, but it's an even better day when clout score goes down but bank account goes up. <laughs> LinkedIn, for many of you, is better for the bank account. If you are B2B, spend more time on LinkedIn. If you're B2C, spend more time on Facebook and Twitter. Our friend Randy Gage is very much B2C, he, he spends no time on LinkedIn, but he's made a ton of money through Facebook and, and Twitter. But if you are going for corporate audiences, associations, those sorts of audiences, you really need to spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. And uh, Anthony Steers from uh, the Tim's Valley chapter, he was our escort the other night, and so uh, as he was taking us to, to the chapter meeting, he was sharing uh, what he calls LinkedIn flirting. And he took this concept to a, a new level. All right, let's, let's say that you're interested in doing business with, Terry mentioned earlier, Chevron. So you go to look at an executive with Chevron, you go look at their LinkedIn profile. Now, smart people on LinkedIn are looking at who's looking at them, and you should be looking at who's looking at you. So when you look at who's looking at you, then, then, then you go back and you say to them, oh, I see that you were looking at my profile. Is there anything I can do for you? You send them a message or you directly call them. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Here are some ninja tricks for raising your clout score. It's just an example that you know, your clout score is going to increase when you interact with other people. I like to keep a checklist so that I can be good on that consistency part. When I do a blog post for myself or my clients, we make sure that we broadcast it. We do do some broadcasting. We do a lot of interacting, but we do do some broadcasting. And you want to make sure that you're not over posting. So you want to post on Facebook, Twitter, and maybe in some of your groups, but don't over post in the groups. So a checklist on Google Docs helps you with that. I use a tool in Gmail called Reportive. 
And within my Gmail, it allows me to see, okay, what are the latest tweets from my friend Scott Friedman when I'm sending him an email? And I can tweet with him right there. I don't even have to leave Gmail. It's really a very efficient tool. I can do Facebook, it does Facebook posts also. All right, my, one of my very favorite tools, Buffer App. Anybody use a Buffer App? Buffer App's very good. It allows you to trickle posts, buffer them into your different social networks. Uh, it's extremely powerful so that you're not overwhelming people with posts all at once. So let's say that you're you know, doing your morning reading and you want posts to go out throughout the day rather than overwhelming people all at once. So Buffer App allows you to trickle them out. It's free. Uh, it's a great tool. Over the day or over several days, depends on, they, they, it automatically comes with a schedule that's good for your viewers, but you can adjust it. I like it better than Hootsuite uh, for this trickling function. Uh, Hootsuite's trickling function, Hootsuite only came out with a trickling function after these guys were infringing on their market. It's a little, uh, it's faster and it's more efficient than the Hootsuite function. I still like Hootsuite for looking at the streams, as Terry called it, uh, listening to, you know, put in the phrases and the keywords you want to listen for. So I use it for listening, Hootsuite, but I use this for posting. With respect to Facebook, you mentioned and Google Plus. And Google Plus, and some of your groups. Yeah, incredibly powerful. There's Hootsuite, of course. There's If This Then That. I didn't explain earlier what If This Then That does, but If This Then That.com allows you to take different events that happen and schedule posts or do other actions. So if this action happens, do that action. So for example, if it's Friday, then it's for me, it's Facebook Fan Page Friday. I set this up one time on ifthisthenthat.com, and every Friday it's going to just post it on my wall, and people can come over there and post their own Facebook page because they want people to come to their Facebook page. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the things this does. It automates a lot of processes for you. It automate, um, it's just, it, it'll automate, um, so if it's a certain time of day, if you've gotten an, an email from an important client, you can have it send you a text message. That's one way I use it a lot. Okay, online collaborative networks. We have a group of Facebook people, uh, mainly from NSA, but a lot of people from the UK are part of this. And um, so we, we help people get more activity on Twitter, on Facebook, on their different networks. And, and if you'd like to be part of that, just give me one of your cards and we'll invite you to the group. We also have a group about CloudScore. If you want to talk more about CloudScore and just ask questions, we have a free Facebook group where you can do that, raiseyourcloudscore.com. Here's another example of a pull a curtain back, what's, make it easy for your customers. I could say go to facebook.com slash group slash raise my cloud score, but instead I just reserved a domain that's really easy and I redirected it to my private Facebook group. This is one of the most powerful things you guys need to be doing for your customers, for book fans, for, for your different communities. It's like having a virtual clubhouse of your customers that you can reach in there once you've built this group and you can say, hey, what do you guys think about this? I'm thinking about offering this as a product or I'm thinking about doing this or do you like the cover of this book? And it's a really powerful place. It's like a focus group. It's a modern you know, focus group. Here's a LinkedIn group. If you like LinkedIn better, uh, this is a group, uh, one of my clients, Diana Boer, Communicate with Confidence, and it's a great group to look at for, especially for speakers, people who are in the communications business. So you can go there, and there I've done, I didn't do a full uh, domain, but I did a bit.ly, and you can customize that. So bit.ly slash Diana's group is a lot easier than linkedin.com slash group slash 79305, right? So the real secret to getting high cloud score is to consistently produce great content that people want to share. As our good friend Jean-Luc Picard says, you want to engage. I'll take a few questions about clout, and then I want to get into a few things on book marketing. Questions on clout? Social scoring? What is Terry Brock's clout rating? She's usually a 77. <laughs> Why aren't you 79? Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
I tell you, the not yet thinking is really powerful. I, I find myself saying that all the time. Yes? When you tweet, do you also have it appear in Facebook? Or do you keep the Twitter? That's a, that's a great question. I asked that recently on my Facebook profile, and I got uh, about half and half people, influential people, saying both. Alan does, Alan, you go t straight from Twitter to Facebook, right? What was the question, sorry? The question is, should you post the same thing on Facebook as you do on Twitter? Um, and in fact, should you have it like automatically? You can link them so that if you post on Facebook, it automatically goes to Twitter. If you post on Twitter, it automatically goes to Facebook. Now, I have a great amount of respect for Alan. And, and here's a case where it depends on what works for you. I did try the tweeting. Do you want to? Sure. We had a long debate about this on Facebook, and I think I'm, I'm one of the few people, in fact, I was the only person in Australia that posted my Twitter post to Facebook. What I do is unlink it from time to time. So when I'm watching the Eurovision Song Contest, which I was, I was still, like every respectful person, I unlinked it. Because I don't want my Twitter post to be out there as a European country going to Facebook. But normally I link it together because it's some stuff for the same audience. So you don't have to. You can, you can link it out. Yeah, what, what I find um, is helpful is I'll use that buffer tool. And I'll, I'll craft my first post in Facebook. Then I'll, and I'll, put, I'll copy it before I say post to Facebook and Google Plus and LinkedIn where you can have longer posts. Then I paste it in Buffer again, and I customize it for Twitter. I'll shorten it a little bit, um, might add a hashtag or two, although you should be using hashtags in Facebook and Google Plus now also. So it, it doesn't matter as much, you can post but, but what happens for me is I, if I'm tweeting, I'll usually tweet a whole lot, and it's too much for my Facebook feed. It's too much for the Facebook news feed. And people will you know, unfriend you or turn off your post. So that's why I don't do that. But if you, you know, it, it depends on what works for you. In general, I think it's OK to post from Facebook to Twitter. But a lot of people think that's not cool either. Yes? Twitter goes to everyone. There's, there's no uh, private option unless you only have a private Twitter account, in which case, why would you have a Twitter account? So Twitter's totally 100% public. Facebook, you can customize each post. In Facebook, as you're posting, the auto post, you'll usually have it set for public. You can change that so that it's set for a, more, a smaller group. I will warn you, especially if you're focused on your call score, if you go in there and you're posting to Facebook, and um, well, maybe I'll use a flip chart here real quickly, because this is a little hard. To, okay, in Facebook, if you it's right up here at the top. It, it allows you to actually when you're doing the post, it uh, if you have this globe, that means you're posting to the public. If it has just little uh, head shapes, that's a smaller group. Now, what happens is if you change it, and you do a post just to a smaller group, the next post you do is going to automatically take that last uh, setting that you used. And so then you've got to consciously remember to go back to public. This is where a lot of people get tripped up on their cloud score. Terry's got tripped on this. I have too. And you know, I have a great cloud score going. And then all of a sudden, it's going down, 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 down. And sure enough, if you look, you'll notice that we're posting just to a smaller group because we didn't change the tag back. Two? Only two minutes? Oh, I thought I was going to 10 after. Nikki, where am I? OK. OK. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, it is OK to do pro professional stuff on your personal page. On your personal profile is what they call it. And um, the difference between followers and friends, um, the, I accept people that I know as friends. I click them and I allow friends. Because friends still is a maximum of 5,000. But for your personal profile, you can have unlimited followers. Followers can see all your public posts. And depending on your settings, they could comment on them or not. But there's still some value to keeping friends on Facebook, only people that you know. Yes? Uh, with regards to the Facebook page posting, if you post something to Facebook page and if you share it on your personal profile, you get more eyeballs if you're not getting it on your profile uh, page. page. 
Yeah. So if you first post it on the uh, page and then post it, share the same thing from the page on your personal profile, you get more likes and links to your site. Yes, that's a great way to do it. So put, post first on your page, share it back to your personal profile. Larry Wing is a great example. He, he does that. All right, let's talk just a little bit, add on to what we've already said about social uh, scoring and networking and such to book marketing in particular. I, I spoke recently at the uh, NSA sponsored a Mega Millions book publishing lab in New York and they brought in all these publishers and editors and people who were, you know, you got to pitch your book and then they had a lot of us talking about how to market books. So here were some of the highlights from that. I'll just run through it pretty quickly. But you got to build this tribe. You can't do book marketing all by yourself. For me, it was important to choose a great co-author. I, I could have never written the book. I just did not have the stick to it, discipline, ability to sit there and write and, and get a book out. So fortunately, uh, I brought in a great co-author and so Terry made that happen. We went with a great publisher. And for us, it was pretty simple. I was reading their books, uh, you know, reading different social media books. I saw one that, you know, in particular, they were, they were talking about similar concepts of social influence and, and influence marketing. And I uh, just looked in the front of the book to see who had been acknowledged through the publisher as the, you know, who, who their per person was at the publisher that had helped them. And so I saw the person's name. I sent them an email. I said, would you guys be interested in a book about this, about raising your cost score? And they said, well, in fact, we are. You know, we've been sort of wanting somebody to do that, but we didn't find anybody who had a high cost score, who had good credentials, who we think could write. And so can you do that? And so we put together a proposal, and it was very simple. Uh, so there's a lot of people who go with self-publish, but, but there's a lot of good argument, especially for your first book to be made, for going with um, a big publisher. Mindy would have better. And, and Mindy can help you get the book done, and I'm sure you make recommendations on publisher as well. Right? Okay. So it helped us with distribution. Now, you do that, you help people with distribution here, right? To get into bookstores and such? Okay, am I, am I bragging on you too much or not? Okay, all right. So for us, it helped us get into bookstores. More about Cloud Score. Uh, we had corporate support. Now, in our case, we wrote about Cloud. We did go out there and interview the executives, and um, it helped us a lot with our credibility and with our book. There's Joe Fernandez, the, um, the uh, CEO and co-founder. We really relied on our NSA friends a lot. Now, Terry's been involved in NSA for many, many years, so he has a lot of, a lot of friends within NSA. And a lot of people have been very successful. So they were very helpful in giving us endorsements and uh, participating in the different uh, videos that we did and participating in the special events that we had. For example, uh, that was our mastermind group. Our mastermind group was really critical. Uh, very successful authors there, Randy Gage, Joaquim de Posada sold over four million, four million books, one of the biggest sellers in all of Asia. Uh, Brewster Kell, very successful. Bob Berg, the go-giver. Uh, I mean, we've got an all-star cast here of, of superstar authors, and so they were tremendously helpful. So you need to surround yourself, build your tribe, mentors, coaches, um, if, you, if you can't affiliate with people like that for free, hire them, you know, hire coaches that will help you. Uh, Alan Stevens, we did a virtual book launch, not exactly what Heather talks about, although she, you're going to be speaking about that next month, right? Uh, not in London, they London later on the year. Okay, so Heather does virtual book launch. She takes it across the globe or wherever it is that you want to take it. We just did a, like a marathon session. We did a three-hour virtual book launch, we brought in Alan, we brought in a lot of different uh, superstars on social media and uh, shared, shared tips about how to raise your clout score, how to do social media better. And we used a Google Hangout for that. All right, very important. I think in the old days it wasn't as important to have your own website for your book. I think it's pretty important to have a website for your book now. And here are some of the keys that I think are success, you know, keys to a successful book page. It's really important to get collect the email addresses. And increasingly, you'll see sites where they're collecting the email address right in the header. It's the very top thing. So we're offering free chapters for the book if you give us the email address. And this has helped us collect a lot of email addresses. And you want to collect that because 
people usually, they don't necessarily buy the first time. They don't really get to know you the first time. You want to email people. As much as social media is really important, email is still incredibly important for sales. Email is important for, I mean, social media is important for getting to know people. Email is important for converting those to sales. So you want to collect that. Uh, make it easy for people to buy. In our case, we only put the Amazon link on there because we wanted to have our Amazon numbers stronger. My thought was if somebody wants to buy through another channel, through Barnes & Noble or something, they're going to go there anyway. They can find it. But I want to make it really easy for people to buy through Amazon. And I talked about the private Facebook group where we talk about the book. It's our own book discussion group. It's like a virtual get together and discuss the book. And so we're making that easy for people also through Facebook right there to join our Facebook group. So make it easy for your friends to support your book a lot. Let's see. Okay, I showed you earlier the, tweeter, the tweeting page and a Facebook page. Here's where you can uh, also put together just a simple email for your friends to send out. Helping Sally Hogshead with her, her new book called uh, How the World Sees You. Showed that one earlier. Another key to the book launch website is to ha make it easy for people to interview you. So a lot of you people, a lot of you folks said you were listening to podcasts and some of you are doing your own podcasts. So you end up, what ends up happening, especially in your book launch, your time is short, you want to maximize your time, and people are asking you the same questions. They want to know what questions you want, give a brief description of the book, give them photos, those sorts of things. Just set it all up on a page. It doesn't have to be a public page, uh, like this is cloutmatters.com slash interviews. And for people who book us for an interview, we just say, send them there. And in fact, this is a screening page that they have to fill out a form before they can even interview Terry. Because he gets so many requests, we get the information in advance. We know whether it's one that we want to, to participate in or not because we've evaluated their website in advance after they've filled this out. So this is where they come and they fill it out. Relationship marketing expert Terry Brock is a media savvy speaker with a wealth of expertise in technology and social media. What's the name? What's your media outlet? What's your website? As soon as I get that website, we look it up on alexa.com and see, you know, is this a heavily trafficked website or not? Alexa.com lets us do that. If it's, if it's not so heavily trafficked, well, we may still do the interview, but it, it's not going to go to the top of the list. If it's a really popular blog or website, it's going to go to the top of the list and we'll get to them quickly. Again, we have limited time. You know, we can't do everything. Uh, these are then suggested interview questions. Here's links to photos. Here's links to our website, and here are some testimonials and such. So we go ahead and make that up. It's really easy. People really, the, our interviewers really appreciate that. Nikki, I think we shared this with you or something like this mm -hmm. for, for coming here. Yes. Okay, so online collaborative networks, we've talked about that already. The Facebook, I like the Facebook groups better than the LinkedIn groups because they're more interactive. It's uh, the functionality of the Facebook group just makes it really simple for people to interact more so than LinkedIn and more so than Google Plus communities. That's our cl uh, Clout Climbers group. Okay, so this is the group I was telling you about if you want to join in and get to know people from all over the globe and interact with them, help them with their help, you know, help them get more traffic to their social media sites, they help you get more traffic to your social media sites, just give me your card and we'll put you in that group. Mark Sanborn used a Facebook group, private Facebook group to launch his last book. Our clout book, clout score. Okay, so next time, next time, um, one of the things I would do, we didn't really focus on this enough, but the statistic that I've seen recently is 60% of book sales occur before the book launches. Did you guys hear that? 60% of your sales occur before the book launches, if you do it right. So you really want to get out there with a massive promotion in advance. And so this is where, with Sally Hogshead, we crafted, it's almost like a Kickstarter kind of campaign. And we've said, okay, if you buy this many books, you get this special. If you buy this many, you get this special. And uh, there's a video and such, so we've crafted it. Now, as soon as it goes online, uh, her official book launch, we'll take away these extra special bo bonuses and bundles, and we'll just have the Amazon links or the Barnes & Noble links, that sort of thing. Okay, so here are opportunities. NSA, Social Media Partners, uh, the Call It Matters, the Strategy Session, the Marketing Power Booster. I think I gave out some forms earlier. If you guys could share those with folks, please. 
Okay, those of you who are interested in the time management for social media, that's a great course. It really helps you with some of those tools that we've discussed, and we would love to help you with that. If you feel like you need more help, uh, you know, Terry and I have shared a number of things that we help people with. Video marketing, book marketing, social media. Uh, if you feel like you would like more one-on-one -on -one attention from us, this is an opportunity to do that. So we would love to help you with that. If you've already bought the social media time management course, then just, you know, we would deduct that from this. Terry, anything you want to add to that? Our email addresses are on there also. So with that, I think, I think I'm out of time. Build your tribe and share your brilliance with the world. Thank you. That's the highest clout person I've ever shaken hands with before. <laughs>